a meet and greet a quarter after, but I don't understand the accent. Yeah, I can. <coughs> Whatever. Good evening, folks. My name is Ken Conklin. I'm the communications director for the town of Clarksville. I uh, want to welcome you here tonight for our uh, public information session. Uh, we're here tonight because we learn from our mistakes. We learn that uh, sometimes more communication with residents is better than less. Yes. So we decided to hold this session so you all could ask some questions, get them answered, learn more about this project, how it may affect you or your business. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge we have uh, Council Member Mike Mustaine here with us. Also sitting over in the corner here is Mike Huff, our Assistant Superintendent of, Street, of our Public Works Department. Uh, but speaking tonight is going to be Chad Gibson, he's with Lockmuller Group. They are the designers on this project and they'll be doing the inspections as we go along. So I'll let you give it to Chad. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. So uh, before jumping into our presentation, I just want to go over a few brief things with you. So uh, during the presentation, uh, just please hold your questions to the end. Uh, we will open the floor to any questions that you may have. Along with myself, uh, there's some other representatives with Lockmuller Group here. And again, uh, the town is well represented tonight. Uh, any questions you have, we're going to try to answer them and address those. Uh, I also want to point out, too, that um, after the Q&A session, we also have some graphics in the back that you might have saw. Uh, we have a graphic showing the, the maintenance of traffic plan. It's basically um, showing um, uh, the detour when the road is closed. We have another graphic that shows like a plan view. You should be able to identify your home from that map. And then in the very center in the back, we have a full plan set. So if you're curious about uh, maybe more than the more uh, minute details that are happening in front of your property, uh, stop by and see us over there too, okay? Alrighty, so getting into the presentation, what we hope to do this evening is provide a brief overview of um, the overall planned improvements along the Blackest of Mill corridor, okay? So we're here tonight to primarily discuss uh, phase two construction, um, but understand that this is a part of a greater effort. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the purpose and need of the project. You know, why is the town of Clarksville investing in Blackest of Mill Road and uh, upgrading the infrastructure? We're also going to talk about um, more of the details for phase two, uh, the construction schedule, uh, the timeline, the cost, and how is it going to impact you getting in and out of your homes or and businesses. And then we're also going to discuss the communication plan. Um, we want to make sure that you all know that um, we're not just talking to you here tonight, uh, that we're going to make steps to continue the communication process with you all through construction. So, um, as far as the overall Blackest of Mill Road improvements, um, the plan the, over the entire corridor, it's approximately one mile in length from um, Lewis and Clark Parkway all the way to Gutford. Phase one uh, was completed back in 2020. Uh, it went from Lewis and Clark Parkway, approximately 600 feet north, essentially that northern driveway uh, at Kroger. Uh, and with phase one, uh, we widened the existing roadway quite a bit. Uh, we upgraded a lot of the drainage in phase one additionally. Again, phase two, what we're talking about here tonight, uh, basically that, that northern drive of Kroger, you know, all the way to Ultra Drive. Um, the heavy construction for phase two, it's going to happen this year in 2023. Um, there may be some lighter construction components that will carry over into 2024. And then phase three uh, is currently in the pipeline. There's a long way to go with that as far as the development. We're talking about you know, right away, environmental process and that sort of thing. But it's currently anticipated to go to construction in 2028. So as far as the existing conditions, and I don't want to, to, to bore you with a bunch of engineering lingo here, but um, it's, Blackstone Mill Road is functionally classified as a minor arterial. Uh, approximately 12,300 cars a day pass through Blackston Mill Road. So why is that important, you may ask. So those two things, along with the crash data, has made this a good candidate to receive federal funding, okay? So uh, the town of Clarksville, good stewards of the taxpayers' money, they have received um, federal funding to pay for 80% of this project, which is huge. Um, the existing roadway uh, has two 11-foot lanes. 
There's, there's not much of a shoulder out there. Um, there's no curb and gutter, which is not ideal for an urban type project. Uh, there are some drainage concerns out there. And um, there's no sidewalks out there. So if you live within phase two, you want to walk to Kroger to get a loaf of bread, you don't have a safe or efficient way of doing that. Okay. So as for the need for improvement, again, some of the crash data is listed here. 121 crashes um, in a five-year period uh, from 2008 to 2013. Um, some of the delays that you experienced the queuing out there was addressed in phase one. Phase one, again, was more in the heavier commercial area. Uh, but as this project advances northward into phase two and three, we're also going to continue to see some improvements there. Uh, the existing pavement is nearing the end of its life cycle, okay? Uh, asphalt, at some point in time, it becomes oxidized, it becomes really brittle, it starts to crack up. So the actual pavement out there, it's due for um, a replacement. Drainage, I'm sure you've all noticed some, some issues with drainage out there. Um, that will greatly be improved. Uh, with this project. We'll get into more details on that in a sec. And then uh, again, uh, no sidewalks and that will be corrected with this project. So as far as the proposed improvements go, uh, this is um, a depiction of, we call this the typical section of the roadway. So um, the southern portion of phase two, kind of as we approach the, uh, the commercial area, you know, around Kroger, um, the road will be widened a little bit there as we develop those turn lanes. Um, but once we get north of Alterwood, uh, we're going to go back to a two-lane section, uh, two 11-foot lanes. Um, you're going to see curb and gutter, which is greatly going to improve some of the drainage. And then we're going to have sidewalks on each side of your roadway. Um, okay. And then as far as your drainage improvements goes, uh, you know, uh, asphalt, it's an impervious surface, right? So uh, rainfall comes, it's going to um, dissipate, um, and it's now going to be collected by um, a curb and gutter instead of going in your yards. Uh, curb and gutter is going to direct storm water into an underground storm sewer uh, trunk line that's going to be placed under the Blackstone Mill Road pavement. And then additionally, there's going to be a large drainage basin that's going to be constructed in front of Blackstone Mill Bowl. And with that drainage basin, it's going to increase a lot of the storm water capacity uh, for storage. And then uh, with that, it's going to greatly reduce uh, the risk of flash flooding. So as a part uh, of any major uh, public improvement project, um, utilities are involved. Um, almost all utilities uh, largely utilize public right away to accommodate their facilities. Um, so when a, when a municipality such as Clarksville, they want to do an improvement project, widen their footprint, put in new drainage, a lot of times utilities are, are you know, in, in conflict with that construction. Um, so you've probably been seeing since probably October, a lot of the utilities have been active out there. Um, Centerpoint, gas, they finished their relocation in February. Duke Energy, uh, your electric provider. They've moved their electric poles east of Blackston Mill Road. Uh, Charter Communications and AT&T, uh, two communication utilities, they'll soon be relocating their aerial uh, facilities to the new Duke Energy poles. Um, that actually should be wrapping up very soon. Uh, but the big one that I want to talk to you all about is Indiana American Water. Uh, Indiana American Water has an existing 8-inch water main out there and they are going to upgrade their water main to a 24 inch diameter pipe that is a huge pipe so when we talk about utility relocations for instance center point gas they bored um, the majority of their relocations so for what you saw you didn't see a lot of mess um, it was a smaller pipe they were able to do that but with a 24 inch pipe uh, that has to be uh, placed five to six foot deep they're going to open up some big trenches they're going to be removing a lot of dirt and the location of that is going to be under the proposed pavement so we actually have to backfill that trench with granular rock type material that has to be compacted um, it's going to take a lot of time it's going to take up a lot of room so starting uh, march 15th blackston mill road will be closed to accommodate uh, indiana american waters relocation 
Uh, the contractor is Dave O'Mara. You'll see some Dave O'Mara trucks out there. They will be doing that work. We'll talk a little bit about more about the closure in a second. So as for the road construction details, I mentioned earlier this project has federal money associated with it. Uh, so it was let through NDOT. Uh, so back on February 10th, uh, MAC Construction uh, was the low bidder. MAC's out of New Albany. Uh, the cost for this project come in at $2.7 million. As far as the schedule goes, again, Waterline will start uh, next week, a week from tonight, March 15th. Uh, we expect the Waterline relocation to be completed by May 1st. Um, so around that time, MAC should be starting the actual road construction. The project has an intermediate completion date set for November 20th of this year. So what that means is that all drainage structures should be in place, all sidewalks should be in place. Um, the pavement section itself will be complete except for the final surface coat, the final inch and a half. So uh, pavement markings <coughs> won't be a part of that, but it will be sufficient enough to open it back up to traffic. So hopefully here by uh, Thanksgiving, if everything goes like it should, traffic will be, will be back up uh, and going, leaving only some lighter construction type work to do in 2024. That would be putting down the final asphalt coat, or final asphalt coat proposed pavement markings. And then if there's any issues as far as getting you know, vegetation established, that sort of thing, we'll take care of that. And all that work has to be done by July 28th of 2024. So getting into the maintenance of traffic plan, okay, so this work has to be done under a closure. Uh, so traffic through traffic will be detoured uh, utilizing Lewis and Clark Parkway, Lynch Lane, and Longfellow Drive. Um, so the term close to through traffic, what that means basically is at each end of Blackest and Mill Road, the barricades will be staggered, okay? So if you live within those project limits, you have every right to get to your home. And it will be Matt Construction's responsibility to provide you access to your home every single night. If someone is just trying to, you know, to cut through on Blackstone Mill Road, they are not supposed to be doing that. That, that, that is the distinction there. So um, I do want to be real with everyone. It is a construction project. There's going to be a lot of equipment going on. Um, there's going to be dirt and dust. That's just, that's just life, okay? Um, the pavement will actually be ripped out at some point in time. So it may be a fact where one day you come home and there's a, a, a gravel uh, roadway for you to get into your driveway. I also want to let you know that all of your driveways, the portion of your driveways that are within public right-of-way, they will be replaced with concrete. So you're going to get a a portion of a new driveway is going to be concrete. Concrete takes three to five days to set up. So there may be um, a period there where Mac and Lockmuller Group may be reaching out to you all to uh, arrange something during those days. Uh, if you have two drives to your property, it's no big deal. We'll, we'll, we'll do one driveway at a time. If you have a wide driveway, we can construct it a half at a time. But if you have a single narrow driveway, we may have to ask that you park at a neighbor's house something like that, or, or on the street, just for that three to five day period <coughs> while the concrete is curing, okay? Um, and then again, uh, this is the, the detour. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. This graphic is in the back. Um, right here we have Blackstone Mill Road. The detour is gonna utilize uh, Lewis and Clark Parkway, Lynch Lane, and then up to uh, Longfellow Drive. Okay, so one of the last things that I want to talk to you about is a communication plan. Okay, Lock Mueller Group, we pride ourselves in um, reaching out to you all and keeping you connected during the projects. Residents, businesses, uh, town of Clarksville, we all want to keep you in the loop of events that are happening. So um, what type of things will we share with you? Just important stuff. We're not going to bug you. Um, notifications of road closures, if there's a planned utility outage, something along those lines, we will pass that pertinent information on to you. Uh, we also do a monthly newsletter, and you will all get that. 
Um, so with that, we provide just general updates on the project. Is things advancing like they should? Are we behind schedule? Um, you know, those type of things. And that's going to be delivered to you all via uh, this email address, okay? And if you got a minute, you got a pen, you want to write it down. If not, that's okay. We can, we can uh, talk about it later. But it's blackest and mill, ph2, at lockgroup.com, okay? So, how do you um, sign up to receive these type of notifications? So we've got three different ways that you can do this. So one, I'm going to go back to this email address. Uh, if you write this down, the blackest and mill ph2 at lockgroup.com. Uh, if you email that, uh, we will have your email address and we will include you on our distribution list. Alternatively, um, we have a sign up sheet at each row of tables. Uh, put down your name, put down your email address, we'll add you to our distribution list. And finally, as a follow up uh, to, to, to tonight's meeting, we're going to be uh, distributing door hangers. All right? And on these door hangers, we're going to have information on how to sign up to receive these notifications. We're also going to have uh, contact information to utilize during construction. We should get those do uh, door hangers out either late this week or early next week. Um, so the final slide here, uh, on the right here, this is a, a picture of the door hanger that you're going to see. Um, so construction contacts will be on that door hanger. Okay, I want to make sure you all know that. The Blackiston Mill uh, PH2 email address is on that door, will be on that door hanger also. Okay. Uh, quickly want to introduce to you all Corey Dolt. Corey's with Lock Miller Group. He's going to be our project engineer on site. He's going to be our boots on the ground person uh, responsible for overseeing construction. He will be your primary contact. He's going to know more about the project than anyone else. Um, so make sure you get a chance to either write his number down. Corey's got some business cards uh, there in the back. Take a chance to stop and meet Corey later. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm Chad Gibson. I'm a Corey supervisor. Uh, my contact information is there as well. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. And then uh, with Mac Construction, um, it's Doug Jacobs. And Mac is the person or the entity you want to contact in the event of an emergency. Uh, so if it's a late night, something, something strange happens during the weekend, non-working hours, uh, Mac Construction is really who you need to contact. So with that, I think I'm wrapped up and ready to open things up to any questions that you may have. <coughs> yes? So I work at the Peddler's Mall, <clears throat> and my boss wanted to know, so are you all going to be using, are the trucks going to be using, I know you're all going to have to come in and get your all's um, pipes and stuff that you all put in the parking lot. Yep. Um, but I know the last time you all closed the road, we had a lot of people cutting through, flying through our parking lots, which caused us to have to put bigger speed bumps in. Okay. Um, and so our parking lot isn't in great shape now. Okay. And the concern with uh, my boss is that more people are going to use that as a cut through. Um, and I mean, we've got over 200 vendors. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, it, it puts people in a dangerous position. <clears throat> you have people cutting and flying through that parking lot. And we're very busy on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. And I, I actually think that, well, one, the location of phase two, uh, it's basically, it's going to start at that drive. So to cut through, they're not really going to be able to go anywhere because they're going to be coming right out into the middle of the construction zone. That's one. But two, I want to make sure you know too that if you, at any point during construction you see a, um, a triaxle, a heavy loaded um, piece of equipment traveling through that parking lot, let us know. We'll shut that down quick. That should not be happening. Okay? Yeah, kid? Uh, we learned pretty quickly from the Lincoln Drive closure um, that we needed to increase, increase police patrols. Uh, around those construction sites because it was really getting dangerous with the folks trying to, they were driving up to people's yards, going through Duke Energy's property. So we've already got it in place where we're going to have extra police patrolling that area to make sure they're not cut through yards <coughs> or trying to speed through parking lots. But if you have, or have any issues like that, call, don't call them, call 
our police department. They have a non-emergency number on their website, and they'll send officers out there to take a look. Okay. Yes. What are your construction hours? They will vary depending on the task. Um, and, and I, I, I can you repeat the question. So oh, just to repeat the question, she asked um, what will be the construction hours, and that will vary depending on what's going on that day. Um, <laughs> When you're doing construction, um, a lot of things can go wrong, right? You can have planned hours and then you get towards the end of your day and something goes wrong and next thing you know, you're committed to working another two hours until you get that done. Um, I will say this, that on phase one, and, and I can't guarantee at all this is gonna happen, I'm, I'm speaking for on behalf of Matt Construction, but in phase one, they worked a four, uh, four day work week, Monday to Thursday. If it rained during the week, uh, they may work a Friday, may work a Saturday, uh, but they work four 10-hour days, typically 6, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. In the back? Yeah. Lynch Lane, as you come down Lynch Lane, there is a car wash. You can only turn right. Is that, will that be the main that way? I believe that's the plan, yes. So if you're going to, if you want to go east on... Clark, you gotta go down to some place and turn around and come back. Either that or you can go out from Longfellow out to Byron and hit Grand Jury. Oh, okay. So you're gonna go east to get out of that one? Yeah. <clears throat> yes? Do not access to uh, like Right, sorry. Um, so if you have a customer, all your customer all customers to all businesses have every right to be coming through the construction zone. Okay, uh, if you have any deliveries, you know, big trucks coming, it'd be awesome if you could give us a little heads up to make sure that we're, we're accommodating everything. And how often do you all have big truck deliveries? Okay, yeah, um, so that'd be great um, to get your information. Um, certainly have that contact directly with you uh, just to give Mac, our contractor, a little heads up um, so they can maybe um, help that a little bit. But yeah, as far as everyday, um, people coming, your customers, shouldn't have a problem getting in to your, your business. Will they be able to come in? It'll probably vary depending on the day. Um, and that's, that's another thing that, that we'll, we'll have to communicate with you as well. So as a part of this project, uh, we're putting in a lot of uh, storm drainage. So there may be an afternoon where south of your drive, um, the roads, there's, there's a trench, it's impassable. Uh, and then maybe you have to come in from the north side. And then conversely, Later on down the way, it could be that. It could be the opposite. Can we put up uh, any signage? Can you put up signage? Yes, temporary signage. I don't think that would be a problem. Unless the town has a problem with that. I would, I would yeah. coordinate yeah. the street. Oh, yeah, you would have to coordinate it. But the emergency has some signage ordinances that you still have to. <coughs> so it depends on how you buy it. We're going to be as flexible as we can yeah, with that. So, hey, you go this way, this way, this way, and get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Should and there's be. some other plans that maybe can be utilized too that may work later on. So once that's once that's <coughs> clear, then we can communicate that back to you. <coughs> if, it, if, it, if it goes the way I'm hoping, it'll make it easier for you. Yeah, but we're working. You guys talk to the schools about school buses and all that fun stuff? Yes. <laughs> that's, yes, that's being, okay. yes, all that's being. Uh, emergency uh, services, ambulance services, they're all going to about that. Yeah. And then they will get that out to them. Yes. So, just to follow up on that school bus, because I know there's a school bus stop right there in the middle where the construction is going to be. So, the bus will, it's my nephew's daughters and if they get on it I want to be able to let them know that stuff's not going to change. Kind of like with the big trucks that they were talking about uh, that will be communicated on a frequent basis because again if there's a trench that they can't get past then the bus may have to come around and do it a different way. They may have to walk three or four yards to to get to the, 
the more convenient place to pick them up. But again, we're going to be as flexible as we can. Now I would say no. I mean, this is this is going to be inconvenient for everybody, but it is long overdue and it's much needed, and it's going to be better for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will make sure that. that in the back? Yeah, I, I have a couple of thoughts to put. Uh, I take it there's a phase three after this, which continues on farther now. Is, is that in the plans or in the works or, or what's the timeline on that? So yeah, the right now uh, the timeline would be a, a 2028 construction, but I want to be um, real with that. There's a lot of things that have to be done to meet that. Uh, a lot of environmental work, right of way work, uh, acquiring funding also. So, yeah. Second question for me. Uh, so, putting storm drains and all that in here now, I'm assuming the storm is going to be what, 36 inch or so, something like that, to handle all that? Just guessing. Um, so, it's going to vary. Um, so, I mean, as you, as the drainage goes south to Lewis and Clark Parkway, it'll, it'll get bigger and bigger. So, um, under phase one, we put in, Corey, go back to one of those slides. We put in a huge uh, underground box culvert. Um, so as we're working our way northward, that the size of that trunk line that's under Blackston Mill Road, it, it, it'll pick up less drainage so that the, the pipe sizes will get smaller. But I, I believe we're still at least 36 inches. Corey. Yeah, culvert. So. But yeah, like right here, this is the, this is the, which, I don't know if you can see the scale from where you're at, but that, it's like a, a nine by four box culvert, <coughs> if I remember correctly. That, that's in phase one. That, that's, on the very north end of phase one, we, yes, there was a manhole where we transitioned to a big elliptical, and that will continue. Towards, uh, uh, Park, yes, correct, correct. Indiana in the back. Uh, it shouldn't be. I mean, again, if someone has a reason to be at your home, if you guys have visitors, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they can come to your home. So, uh, I, I think you'd be okay. Yeah. Right here. Are they going to put any more of the big barriers in the middle of the road so you can't turn right or left? There's no plans uh, north of phase one. Where they put it in at the beginning of Flaxen's Bill from 131, I mean, it put CVS out of the business. And, and the, well, that was a state mandated. Yes. Uh, that was a state mandated uh, entry into that. Again, the state is, is funding most of this and the federal government, but that. Uh, that barrier or that curb that was put in there, that wasn't the town's doing. That was something that was required to go in there as part of that, uh, as part of that phase. And uh, I've not seen any plans that indicate that that's needed, and it's really not needed on past that. But it was unfortunate. Uh, the CVS is now, as I understand it, going to be auto zone. Uh, so. Yeah, CBS was struggling all over, but it this that did hurt them, I assume. Uh, but uh, not enough that uh, AutoZone is not moving to that location, so that they are going in there, uh, even as bad as that is. But that was that was one of the safety concerns on Phase One, and that's why that was there, and that was their decision. It wasn't the council or anything like that question about the pond yep how big where's it going to be why does it have to be a pond and not underground with everything else so well, you know one thing with that uh, I do also want to point out that this this pond it's not only um, for improving drainage along blocks to mill road uh, but also some of the other neighborhoods so there's currently a um, I'm, I'm sure y'all can't see it but take my word for it there's currently an under drain or underground pipe coming from the neighborhoods east of Blackston Mill Road, and it ties into the existing storm sewer at Blackston Mill Road. So that <clears throat> is also going to be dumped into the storage unit as well. So ultimately, at, at some point, you have so much water coming in, in leading into one pipe, and there's only so much storage, okay? 
or it starts backing up and causing flooding. So what this is doing, it's just creating more storage. The water will dump in there and essentially it's going to reduce um, the risk of flooding. That water should back up less, if that makes sense. So how big are we anticipating this pond and where is it going to be? Uh, I'd have to look more at the actual plans. I believe, is it what, four foot deep? Uh, I'm looking at the, should be about seven foot deep. Um, and this is going to be where? In front of Blackstone Bowl. In front of Blackstone Bowl. So we have an automatic mosquito control that's going to come see us frequently? The water won't, the water, it's, it's, not, it's not going to stay there. It's, it's more of a detention versus a retention. So it's that water will will come in, it will it will fill to the necessary event. But as downstream Empties. moves on, then it's going to move on, uh, much like the the detention pond or the re, the detention pond behind Walmart. Uh, there's not a pond that stays there, but in a real heavy rain, it fills up or it 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 takes on water and it holds it until such time that downstream can handle that amount of water that's going on down. So it's, there's going to be some water there, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't stay long. Yeah. And this shouldn't face any of our drainage issues back behind Kroger, our blackest and mill area. Back no, our no, because that, that will go from that point, it will go into the storm drain, but it's just, it's just holding that so that it gives upstream more volume uh, to go somewhere till it can handle it downstream. Okay. He's the expert. I'm just... Okay. <laughs> I'm a construction engineer, not a design engineer. Sorry. What about the manhole cover? They don't be level with the street or like they are now. There's about five of them that knock your socks off. They're supposed to be level with the street. And, yeah, when, and, and now there's like inch or two lower. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, we that won't happen. Uh, okay. So um, as a part of that, our contract, there's pay items basically for the contractor to adjust any existing manholes to the finished grade. So yeah, all manholes within the pavement section will be flush. So you're not gonna hit a bump when you hit, hit a manhole, are you? I will tell you this: you will fill it, but it won't be a bump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. The newspaper said something about this project going to the cemetery. Understood that to be the cemetery next to Dillon's. Is that what you're calling That's phase three? Phase three. Phase three. Yes, the, this this project goes from basically the back of Stuart Emory, where they finished, up to all. <laughs> Watch those chairs. <laughs> That's reflexes. Uh, basically, this will go from. I'm sorry. But, but it basically this will yep. go from the back of Stuart Emory up to Ultra. Phase three, which is way down the road, will go from that point on around and up to the Hale McBride Cemetery, which is up at Marlow Drive. Uh, but not, as I understand it, not quite to the Hale McBride Cemetery. But that is, again, I mean, five years out at minimum if everything goes good uh, and the funding comes in we're looking at a minimum of five years there I'd, uh, so then are there any plans to go from marlow gutford towards the bridge you are past my lifetime <laughs> <laughs> but yeah eventually eventually yes but this this project what well, phase one two and three just went to that point um, and, and if there's something done from that point on, which I'm sure will be needed, uh, you know, uh, at least, yeah, some work done. But at this point, the, the honest answer is no. There's not a plan in place that I know of. Um, but is it reasonable to assume that it would? Yes, uh, at some point, but again, we are, Years down the road. In the back? Yeah, in our lifetime. Will we ever see a new bridge? Because it is terrible. At the Silver Creek? Yeah. At Silver Creek Bridge. Do you want to handle that or do you want to? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the plans on that. Yes, New that, Albany, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Floyd, that's Floyd County, that's New Albany, but there will be an interlocal agreement when that all starts that will, in, that will include Clark, Clark County, 
Clarksville, New Albany, and Floyd County, and there will be an interlocal agreement that happens. But we probably are minimum four, four years out from the new bridge. And, and again, it's not that it's not needed, but the funding to pay for it uh, has to come to Floyd County, New Albany. Um, and, and the funding for these projects is so far out that, I mean, you just got to get in line. And, but How yes, many holes have to develop? <laughs> <laughs> well, John, the, al the alternative to that <clears throat> is all the plants. Well, the alternative to that is, is closing the, yeah. the bridge, and none of us want that. None of us want that. So Floyd County and New Albany, to their benefit or to their credit, they're doing everything they can to keep that bridge open as long as they can. But uh, they, like us, could not be happier the sooner that it happens because, you know, it, we all know that it needs it. It's dangerous. And, uh, 1,000 cars a day. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and and I've talked to the engineer that is that checks that every month. He checks that bridge every month, and he keeps up and keeps track of it. And uh, um, I, I will still drive across it, but does it need replaced? Absolutely, and the sooner the better. So we might see it in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> Depends on how this project goes. We may all be going. No. Uh, yes, uh, at hopefully four or five years that project will get started, um, and and once that funding is there, it's going to be all hands on deck because, and what they're the way I understand it, what they're going to do is they're going to build a bridge just upstream of the existing bridge. They're going to keep that bridge open as long as possible until such time that they can open this up and then they will, there may be a week that they have to shut it down or I'm guessing whatever, a few days, but they are going to build the new bridge the way I understand their plans. Uh, they're going to build the new bridge and keep this one open as long as they can while they finish as much as they can on the new one and then make the switch. But yeah, it can't be soon enough. It really can't be. Question here? Is there any way we can have access to this PowerPoint? Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you sign up um, this email distribution list, I can make a PDF of this presentation yeah. and send it out to all of you. Suggest PDF yep. Version. Yep. Yeah. No problem at all. Are you at the curve there at Altra? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd like to look at the plans with you um, here in a minute afterwards, right behind you. Um, my gut says you're just outside of phase two, so I want to look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the lot won't be approved. Yeah, so. It's probably yeah. going to be a phase three correction. She's the last house on the north end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Here. Um, talking about flooding, and I know that that you you guys have a lot of water. We do too. In fact, my house I have a moat in front of my house almost all the time. Um, we live just a few houses up from you to work forward. Um, and I don't want to be a naysayer or curse anything, but. How long into the project are we going to know if this basin, which should absolutely work to collect the water? I guess I'm trying to ask, is there an alternate plan in case my yard is always underwater still? Or do we expect this are to be like, we're never going to have to flood again after east side or west side? You on the, Yeah, are you on the east side of Blackstone or the west side? So we're across the street from Blackstone Bowl to Okay. Um, again, I'd like to take a look maybe at your yard. We can look at some cross sections and just see if there's things like grading wise. And yeah. Then the road. So we always get when my water gets above yeah. my driveway, I know that everybody else is going to start flooding as well. 
but but there's there's a good chance that we're going to um, create some very shallow swells in your yard. Um, there will be some yard drains that will be added. Uh, again, yard drains are going to lead to these curb drains, which will lead to this storm sewer trunk line that we're talking about. So um, I'd like to just maybe later on uh, grab me and we'll look at the uh, cross sections uh, at your yard. We'll see what it looks like. I have one more question about mine, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yeah. Um, when they start to um, take our mailboxes to fit in the sidewalk, are we going to have access to our mail? Will we have to get something at the post office going? What are we going to do with that? So that will be the responsibility of MAC Construction. Um, and I will say, MAC, to their credit, that we talked about having them here tonight. Uh, but they haven't received their notice to proceed from NDOT yet, so whatever they're doing is kind of at risk at this point. Uh, but it will ultimately be up to them. Um, so again, <clears throat> we have to maintain access for you all to get to your homes. So I think there's a good chance that the mail carrier will be able to get to uh, your mailboxes. Um, there may be a time where they have to park and get out and walk a little bit. That may be a, a, um, a possibility. But alternatively, on a lot of these projects, what we've done in the past too, is we find a nice common location, uh, we'll have our contractors set up temporary mailboxes. Uh, usually what they'll do is they'll, they'll take a five gallon bucket, pour sacrete in it, uh, and have a mailbox for you. Mail carrier comes, gets everybody in, in the, whole, the whole community, um, their mail that way. So. Yep. Will a pond have any type of fencing or anything around it? I'm just fencing? always concerned about you know, water um, in it, maybe two it, or three days, it, children, it, that sort of it, thing. It is very, well, I will say this, it's going to be seven foot deep, but it's going to be, it's not going to be all at once. It's going to be um, very kind of shallow, or, or very uh, gradual okay. as the excavation is done. Uh, these, are, these are contour lines. Um, so again, in that, in that seven feet, I don't, I don't have a scale to tell you exactly what it is, but I would say it's at least a three to one slope, maybe even shallower than that. Okay. So. Yeah. You say this is going right in front of Laxton Bowl. In that empty field? Yes. Right directly in front of Bowling Alley? Yes. So, I know the town of Clarksville has already purchased that field. And I know I looked um, in your big master plan of everything that, you know, they're planning on doing. In the future, it looks like there's either going to be a subdivision or apartments in that field. So is that not happening now? Is it going to be this instead? I'm not aware of that. You're talking about the 3C master plan mm -hmm. again, and I, I, I caution people about the 3C master plan. 3C master plan is a guidebook. Guide it's not yeah, a that's kind of blueprint. Yes. Yeah. Kind of sure. There, there are, and this is kind of the frustrating <coughs> thing about the 3C master plan, <coughs> is that there are streets that the architect or the planners ran through even businesses. You know, and just trying to develop a street grid instead of a huge parking lot, which right. is what we've got now. So they put what could possibly go through there. Uh, and, and so please, when you look at the 3C master plan, as much, that thing actually won an award from the state, but it is very, it's, it, it's not a blueprint. It's just a, a guidebook of uh, illustrative plan. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a it's a pie in the sky. We would like to see this, but since they're putting something like this in that spot, then that probably there probably would never be any other buildings on top of that, correct? Yeah, maybe. And I, 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 that's we can't we can't guarantee that because yeah. they would have to replace the drain somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, right. They have to the trouble of putting this there. Yeah. They might not want to later yeah. remove it. The likelihood of that happening. I don't think, I don't think that at all. I'm sorry if I'm jumping out too much. Oh, you're, you're helping out immensely. Yep. Do you know if there'll be any addition of street lights? Uh, Laxton Mill is completely black, you know, so I was just curious if there's any dimension of street lights. <laughs> How my fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it is so dark. No, no, dark. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it dark. is yeah. just pitch dark on by. I haven't, I haven't seen the plans to that detail, but I can tell you this. I will lobby Duke Energy to put lights in, and I'll be happy to do that. But uh, I can't say that I've looked at the plans and saw the lights, but you are absolutely right. There needs to be more lighting down through there. <coughs> yeah. Um, so phase three, the uh, corner that won't be worked on, it's that, you know, right at the end of 
the phase two, do you know if they're going to be changing the, the because I know there's so many accidents that happen on that corner where that guardrail is. Do you know if they're going to change the uh, trajectory of the street um, for the phase three? I believe there will be some geometric improvements on yeah. those curves. Yeah. Um, I, I personally have not seen those plans, um, but I believe that's what I was told. I've, I've seen it in, I've seen it <coughs> when, we, when we subdivided that lot into three, back when Jim Baker had it, uh, included in that plan was the, the, uh, uh, the access rights to, to, to widen that road and to make it safer to go around. So those lots, uh, they don't, they don't actually go all the way out to the curve. Uh, they're, they're actually 10, 12 feet back in okay. on that. So yes, there is, that's already been taken into account. Okay. Yes. yes, it is dangerous. And kind of like, like Mike had mentioned earlier, you know, in order to um, accept federal funding on these projects, they have to meet certain type of design guidelines and, you know, uh, curvature, minimum curvature around, um, um, curves like that, that, that's part of that too. So I'm sure they looked at the geometrics of the alignment and that's getting worked out. Um, we live on Alter. Are they going to be turning, they're not going to turn, they're going to block it before they get to us so they can't use us? For yeah, a, so you'll, you'll have access um, yeah. off, of, off of Lynch, right, but at, at Blackston Mill will be a solid closure okay. at Alter. Yes. Yeah, we don't want people coming in from side streets into our construction zone. We don't want that, no. Yeah, we, we did construction there at Kroger's and everything else, and I, I think our seat was like 131. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've had some residents on Ultra reach out to me about, about that already, and uh, I've checked, and the intent is for a hard Solid closure. Hard so okay. as inconvenient as it's going to be, if you live on that end of Ultra, you're going to have to go down to, to Lynch. And, uh, for now. Truthful, Mike, I, when I go on 131, I don't go down Blacksburg Road. I used to go down Lynch Lane, <coughs> make a right. Because Kroger's right there, and they have where the gas pumps is and everything else to be put in front of you. Yes? So, Blackston Mill is going to be two extra lanes, or one extra lane on each side, plus the sidewalk? No, it's still going to be two, two travel lanes. Um, you know, one lane in each direction is what it'll be, and then a sidewalk on each side of the roadway. And curbing. And curbing, though. That, that would be the big addition there, yeah. Mm. Any other questions right here? Yep. Yeah. We're looking at structure. I haven't looked at the plans, but when we come around the altar with a nice turn raised there, that's always a tight turn with a drop off. Yeah. So, so I believe the, curb, the, the, the curb apron come around the yeah so so I think the, the construction limit stops just short of ultra um, so that radius would be improved in phase three whenever that comes <clears throat> mm -hmm. if I can she came in late but back here is Karen Henderson she's also one of the town council representatives so as we wrap up tonight, one of the main things we want you all to take out of this is that we're here for you. We know this is inconvenient. We know no one wants to deal with construction, but the town staff are here to help you. The last thing we want is for someone to say, the town's not listening to me, I had this issue, it's call us. If you have any issues, call the town. My number is on the website, I'll give it to you now. Uh, there's no message on it, it's just my desk phone. Uh, we'd rather hear from you and be able to address it before there's any bigger issues. And the key is going to be communication. Just like with Napa, when you have your deliveries, communicate with us. The Lockmuller Group is going to do their best to communicate everything to you all. So just if you have any issues, call the town and we'll help you as best we can. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Everyone's, they're going to be hanging around for a little bit if anyone has any other questions. Or we'll be looking at that.